everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mike Likes. I'm Mike, and today I thought I'd show you guys something you've probably seen before in a different format. So you might recognize this six inch Schmidt Cassegrain Celestron telescope. It was the optical tube of my 6SE, so it hasn't gone anywhere, but it's wearing some new clothes. Um, this black piece here is hiding something new that I've recently set up, and it is a hyperstar. Now, a hyperstar is essentially an optical image corrector, flattener, reducer. Uh, it takes the standard focal length of this telescope, which is 1500 millimeters, so pretty good planetary scope at f10, and it turns it into a astrograph, which is basically a telescope that's only used to take pictures. So we remove the secondary mirror and we install this weird looking thing, and this is the hyperstar. So what does that mean? It means that the telescope goes from F10, a leisurely F10 for planetary use, and it goes to F2. And those of you in the photography world know that an F2 lens lets in bucket loads of light. The photons just flow. It is four and two thirds stops faster than an F10 scope. So what does that gain us? Well, if you take a 60 second exposure on a telescope, let's say of a galaxy or a nebula or a cluster, that's going to cause an issue if you're not on an equatorial mount. I do not do astrophotography. I do EAA, which is Electronically Assisted Astronomy. Now, with EAA, you don't necessarily have to use equatorial mounts and long subs, which are, you know, astrophotography word for exposures. So this hyperstar, and this red thing off of the front is my camera. It's connected, you'd think, backwards because it would normally be over here. This hyperstar lets me take a five to 10 second exposure or a sub, and I get all the data that would normally take 60 to 90 seconds. What's the benefit there? You get an ability to take subs without star trailing, without field rotation, without the possibility that an airplane or a satellite or a comet or whatever streaks across the sub and ruins the stack of exposures that you're taking. In other words, this little hyperstar turns this telescope into a light bucket that would be many times its size. And it's a sleeper because this telescope, you know, just the optical tube, you can find them used for $300. The hyperstar is under 500 and the camera is just whichever camera you want to use, but you will have an astrograph that Celestron without any apology charges over $2,000 for, for their eight inch model. You can have a six inch astrograph for under $1,000, possibly under $800. And that is a very special thing. What do I like about that? I observe in my neighborhood. It's a typical suburb, 40,000 people live in this neighborhood. To give you an idea, they just opened a Costco less than two miles from my house. That means that there's a lot of stray light pollution. I have Bortal 6 skies, so the Bortal scale is what measures light pollution. It goes one through nine. Nine would be Manhattan or maybe the Las Vegas Strip, and one would be just the wilderness, like you can't see your hands in front of you. So Bortle 6 is pretty high up there. I have a lot of light pollution. This camera doesn't care. It cuts through it. You can see so much in a five or six or 10 second exposure that your human eye can't see. And that's the secret to EAA. I do believe that when my children, who are very young right now, are my age, pushing 40, they will mostly think of telescopes as cameras with some motors in there for the tracking and to you know compensate for field rotation of the earth. But this is one step closer to that. Hyperstar makes this easy. I struggled with astrophotography for a long time. I tried wedges, I tried an equatorial mount, I tried different cameras, I tried different software. This has been the biggest I win button ever. This hyperstar turns this telescope into something more predictable, like my Sony camera with an f1.8 lens. I pointed at the sky and the stars are already there. And in a few minutes, I'll show you guys what that looks like in our ASI, ASI live stacking video. But needless to say, I've set this up in such a way where it is just an astrograph that takes pictures. It doesn't have a visual back right now, you'll see. It's just a, you know, dust, dust cap plug there. And it's just 
ready to go. I can convert this back. The nice thing about a Hyperstar is that the entire thing rotates right off the front. You can see I can rotate it there. And that means that I can restore this to visual use in under five minutes. I just put the secondary mirror back in. Hyperstar is uh, made by a company called Star Arizona and their engineering is incredible. The, the cap of the Hyperstar becomes the holder for your secondary mirror when it's not in use. So my secondary mirror is on a shelf behind me, but if I wanna bring this Celestron C6 telescope back to visual mode, I can do so, and then it's no longer an astrograph. Now, when I joined you guys in the video, I have this dust cover. This is just a Celestron aluminum dust cover, and I really like it because it's got a pass-through for the, um, and you probably can't see it on the camera, but it's got a pass-through for the cable. People often wonder, well, won't the cable be in front of my corrector plate? Won't I see that in my photos? No, you won't. The way that that works is when you're in focus, at most, it's going to just cause a diffraction on a star and it'll just look very pleasing in the imagery. It basically disappears when you're in focus. It's not part of your image. So depending on how you drape the USB cable and potentially dew heater cables and anything else you're using, that, that's what that's for. So all that is is a dew shield. I do especially like that it has a metal cap, which is just very classy. So it's a nice Celestron branded metal cap. And you know, these dew shields are a little bit more expensive than the roll up ones. But when you have a Hyperstar on the front of your uh, telescope, it's a little bit more inherently fragile. So I wanted to have something hard that if I set this thing down on the face of it, it's not putting any weight on my corrector plate. So the Hyperstar is riding on glass. And, you know, Star Arizona has been an amazing company. They have videos on how to attach these things, but suffice it to say, you get your telescope, your C6, your C8, your C9 and a quarter, whatever you got, you take off the secondary mirror, it's indexed, so when it goes back in, you don't have to recollimate the scope because a lot of people are scared about recollimating SCTs, and I don't blame them. This screws in just until you feel, not even resistance, just until it bottoms out and can't screw anymore. You don't want to screw it tight, or then thermal expansion and contraction will cause issues. Anyway, screws in, you connect your camera to that, it, they give you an adapter with the proper back spacing for the type of camera you have, and you are off to the races. Put your dew shield on if you live in a humid climate like me, connect your laptop or your ASI air device or whatever control you have of your uh, telescope, and that's all you have to do. I was imaging things like the Horsehead Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Pleiades, the moon, I don't use with a hyperstar, but you know you can, you can rig it any way you want. If you wanna do planetary, you can do that as well with a reducer. So Schmidt-Cassegrain telescopes are the most flexible scopes because you know they come as an F10 scope. You can reduce it to F6.3, which gives this like a 900 millimeter focal range, which is a pretty good intermediate length. And then this Hyperstar puts it down to 300 millimeters, which is like a telephoto lens on a camera, but what a nice way to have a wide field imaging machine without having to buy an Apo refractor or, an, or a uh, Acromat, whichever. You don't have to buy another telescope. You just need to get a Hyperstar. I've seen them used for under $400. A lot of people move up. They get more expensive. As you get to the eight inch model, they start at $1,000, they go up from there. But you know, if you can pick one of these up, and you pick it up secondhand, it's just a chunk of glass. As long as it's not scratched up or damaged, it's gonna work fine. They do have these collimation screws. I didn't mess with them. They're set at the factory. It worked beautifully. These screws with the plastic bushel on the bottom, that's to rotate it so that your camera, uh, you can move it so that it matches up with your sensor. I have a rectangular sensor. Some people have a square sensor. Some people have more of a, of a longer rectangle. Well, you can set that as well so you get the right uh, orientation for your sensor. Guys, this is the best kept secret in astrophotography. It's the I win button. A lot of people will turn up their noses at us because we're not imaging at you know, f6.3, f7, f4, f10. Why not make your life easy? Image at f2, you'll pick up 25 times more speed. So that's what I got for you guys. I'm gonna leave you in the um, software and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so here we are in ASI Live. And what I'm doing in ASI, as you'll see, is I'm imaging a star field. This is actually Alnitak, which is one of the stars in Orion's belt. And what we're going to be doing is looking for the Horsehead Nebula. And you can see part of the Flame Nebula is already appearing there. So as you see what's happening is I'm taking, what, four second exposures, five second exposures, and look at those stars. They're already appearing. Normally you'd be looking at 10, 15 seconds for that, but the Hyperstar is doing all that for us at F2, and you can see some of the nebulosity kind of coming about. 
and the software is stacking them. Now, it doesn't really matter what kind of software you use. Some people use things like SharpCap, some people use the ASI products. There's all sorts of tools that do this, but they basically stack your subs, your light subs, and then you get a stack and you can process it. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the processing of all this, but suffice it to say, once you've got your stack, you can process it and add dark calibration frames and bias frames and flat frames, and it gets all very exciting. But I'm just going to leave you with the final product, which was a picture of the Horsehead Nebula and also the Andromeda Galaxy. And like I said earlier, they're not necessarily going to be um, the prettiest astro photos of the year, but they'll be ones you made without much stress at all. So if you guys like what I'm doing here, go ahead, throw a like on the channel. If you could subscribe, that's even better. I love making this content for you and it makes it so much easier to do. All right. Thank you guys so much. 